Caddis Maximus here. This is going to be a kind of edited and chopped up video about how to fully disassemble and service one of these old Rockwell slash Porter Cable 505 sanders. Real common sander. If you want to be especially nice to it, you'll get new brushes or quarter inch square brushes. And you can get ones that are like three quarter inch long. They have pretty deep brush holders. Triggers basically last forever. If you want to be also extra nice and replace the ball bearings, um, you would want a special HMBR sealed one at the bottom, and you can do rubber sealed on the other two. That would be a 608 skateboard wheel bearing at the top of the motor, a 6201 bearing in the middle section, and a 6202 bearing for the plate section at the bottom. And the rest of the video, I just described taking it apart and just uh, a couple of the caveats, like how the motor... Uh, likes to get kind of stuck in this mid bearing so sometimes you have to press it out or use a puller to push it out to get at that middle bearing but also in this video like I do in this uh, sander this doesn't have many hours on it <clears throat> it's a little dusty in here <laughs> the bearings were just dried out so I did the poor man's thing where I show you to use picks right on the outside edge of the, the seals on these two lower bearings pop out the seals, put in some new grease, wipe the grease off the old seals, and reassemble them just to get some more life out of them, which is something you can do. And on the upper bearing, all you can do is when you have the motor out, you put a, a little bit of grease in the bearing cup. So when you shove the motor back in, since it originally from the factory just comes with a metal shielded upper bearing, one of the reasons it dries out faster than the sealed ones is since it is just shielded, there's a little gap, so when you force the motor back in, it will force some of the grease into the upper bearing. And this upper bearing tends to be the one that goes out first. And I probably put just a little too much grease. I'll just take a rag and wipe some of that off. You don't want to have very much grease in a bearing. Just like, a, you know, put a little bit of grease on a piece of paper or something, and then just use like a little precision screwdriver or Q-tip and just wipe some grease in there, spin the bearing with your finger to kind of get it to go around and just have a little bit of extra. This is obviously just a little too much and it's important bearings because there's a lot of uh, the balls rolling around will churn through that too much grease and can generate enough pressure to pop these little seals. I forgot to mention how to pop the seals is and you'll want to wipe out the old grease that's in the bottom of the seal but in something like this, you don't want to pick on the inside lip because that's really important that that's the rotating part and that's where it really needs to seal well. So instead, it's really good if you have two push pins, safety pins. They need to be pretty sharp. These are really sharp O-ring picks. And you take one pick. And there is actually just a tiny, on all these, come on, seals, you can see just a tiny little lip. And so you just gently push the pick against that tiny little lip and it will just pry up a little bit. And then you use your other hand and the second pick to kind of hold it. Then you use the first pick to pry it up a little bit more. And then after just a couple of cycles of that, you'll be able to get under it and pop it off. And it will stay in shape, straight. And since you're even on the smaller one same deal since you're just right on, very gently picking right on that edge until you can get under it the seals are actually be in pretty good condition and will viably seal again and then you can see down the motor this is all you can do for the bearing on the back because you can't pop out these metals those snap in pretty good they're kind of hard to pop out to try to get against that little lip and so since there is they're not sealed they're shielded and there is a little gap there you just put a little, you don't fill up that recess with the bearing seats, the bearing cup. You put just a little bit of grease in there so that when you push the motor in, that grease will force its way into the bearing. You'll run it for a second with the top cover off to see if any kind of squeezes out the bottom. That way you can use like the corner of a rag to go in there and clean it up. And the last thing is, and the most difficult is, one, making sure that you get the retaining washer on there before you push in the motor that's always annoying when you forget that and then of course tapping in the motor carefully not to d damage this uh, upper bearing somehow you know using a punch right in that recess or something to tap this motor
back down into that housing and then reassemble. I'm jumping around here to try to make this as quick as possible. The motor is actually pretty tightly pressed, not super tightly, but it is pressed into this bearing. And you, you know, if you don't have a press or a puller that you can get in there, just put a you know a socket, 516 socket over the top of it, over the end when it's sitting in like this. Find some e way to evenly support it and then you know tap it out once you do that there is a special retaining plate you can pull that off and you can wipe that down there's a snap ring on top of this bearing you can wipe that down make sure you wipe down this bearing and blow out that bore and then we can at least you know do the uh poor man's version of just popping out the seals with like a little needle or a pick it might bend them a little bit. You might have to bend them straight. It gets you a little bit more life until you order bearings, which, by the way, are a 608 for the top, a 6201 for the middle, and a 6202 for the bottom. And the difference between the colors, that's this is just a shielded bearing up here. Uh, actually, it may be rubber sealed one side, the side that's exposed to the motor. Double-sided rubber sealed on this. It's a little bit more protected being kind of captured in there and In between the counterweight This one is brown because it's sealed by HNBR. There's just higher grade seals Now that you've got those four screws out they can be really tight. You may want to use an impact driver The easiest way to pop the motor out in the two case halves is just to real gingerly reach into the space right above the commutator here with two screwdrivers and evenly pry and if you're detecting maybe you're putting too much pressure because you can fracture the commutator just get a dead blow hammer I have a soft face hammer here and just some light taps part of the reason these last so long is they have a real tight fit between the lower housing excuse me the lower housing and the upper housing which main, makes this motor shaft really straight and centered in the bodies of these. It's part of the reasons they last so long is because they have actually really precise alignment in the bores from the upper bearing and the lower bearing. And I can already tell that this upper bearing is really the one that was giving the most trouble. It's feeling kind of coarse. Just wipe that down real good. I mean, this is the cheap way. You should obviously replace the bearing. This is probably a 608. I can't tell. It's an NSK. Yep, it's just a regular skateboard wheel bearing. And this is the one you'll wanna pull off and really replace. You can also see that the commutator bars on these sanders are really actually pretty thick. They can go through several sets of brushes. You go through a set of brushes and you just take a piece of sandpaper or a file just to smooth out and flatten the commutator and you just have a ton of cross-section. And as far as removing the bottom counterweight, it's actually pretty easy just because um, the motor turns clockwise when you're looking down from the top. So everything's just threaded in with standard righty-tighty or clockwise threads. And so it's real and so just the movement of the grinder is just all the torque that it needs to keep this uh, threaded in tight. And so you can just grab the motor and loosen this by hand. That way you can blow out some of the dust that's under there and inspect this little rubber grommet. This is one of the things that does go out on these and it's, you can find this part, but it's kind of hard. But this is a part of reason, one of the reasons they run so smooth is not just a really good uh, resonant counterbalance, but they also have this rubber isolator between the vibrating shoe and the motor. And just like automotive bushings, these things can wear out, over, although they're not exposed to the sun, some heat, but they tend to last a really long time. But a couple times I've run into these where they've started to crack apart. So you can see how much dust has gotten packed in that bearing. There is dust inside that bearing, but blow it out and then use a small little o-ring pick or a needle to actually pop out the seal and just put some new grease in you'll at least get a little bit of life left out of it when you're pulling this plate off of the 
sander, you don't have to worry about the motor coming out because it's secured by this two-piece plate. But you still will want to pull the motor to put some lube in the back bearing. But you just use flathead screwdrivers, one on each side, and then evenly pull up, and it will just pop off the shaft. So that's part of why this was running slow and seemingly not a good performance is because this bearing still feels okay, but there it could be uh, better. And also another part of it is all the dust that builds up into the counterweight. Um, it was actually starting to rub on that boss there. Blow this section out, and you'll be <laughs> done cleaning it, and you'll end up removing those four Phillips head screws so you can get these two caves halves apart and get the motor out. And a quick note about the brushes here. My tripod was in the way. Somebody had replaced the brushes, obviously, because they are not matching brushes. This one has some kind of small number. This one has a large 1018. So somebody had replaced the brushes. And for some reason, they had loosened this bracket here and stripped out this hole. There's these little metal tabs. So you want to make sure those are tight. And to keep the brushes perpendicular to the commentator of the motor there's actually a little notch on the back of the brush right there which sits on this little piece of webbing so when you put the brush back in come on camera you just twist it until it kind of snaps right into place and that makes sure that it's aligned straight Okay, once you get it all back together, whether or not you use the old brushes and the new brushes with the grease, the new grease, either with the new bearings, you're just fine. With the old bearings, with the new grease, you kind of got to run them in for a minute. I suggest just putting it on the table, preferably with this piece of sandpaper so you don't tear up the wall. And just turn it on, use the trigger lock, and let it run for a few minutes, five minutes or something, to really kind of get it to settle in once you do that. <laughs> does what they're supposed to do these sanders are amazing you can just direct it around just by using the cord itself so well you can't hear me you can direct around with the cord they're so smooth because they are what's known as resonant balance so that's why they kind of do that funky re vibrate badly and then smooth out is that the counterbalance mechanism is tuned to the normal operating speed and frequency and by doing that, they can have exceptionally smooth sanders. And so if you ever run one of these and it's just like t vibrating terribly and it isn't smooth like that, then you know it's either totally shot brushes or totally shot bearings. I mean, these sanders don't have any gears or anything. It's simply a, m a motor with a counterweight screw at the bottom that has an eccentric boss in it so that when you put the plate on, it makes the plate go around in an orbit. These actually motor spin clockwise. So those are the only two issues that can really happen. And that's your service. These are probably the Rockwell Porter Cable 505 are probably one of the number one selling all-time best-selling tools of them. I know that they have sold hundreds of thousands of these things. Surprisingly enough, yeah, they have been staples for cabinet shops woodworking construction uh, it's just on and on they have made these things for probably 50 years or more just basically unchanged going from the 2.3 amp motor like this rockwell has they periodically would give it a little bit more motor power but other than that these 505 sanders are a half sheet sanders are an absolute institution you have a good running one and it will never let you down i mean and go through several sets of brushes. I'm sure that this is a sander that you can get easily. Well over a thousand hours. Uh, if not several thousand hours of usage. Anyway, thanks for watching.